Hello everyone and welcome to the Shinhan Tank Pro League. My name is Kix. I'll be your host for this evening once again, as I always am, because I have uh whoa, I need to mute myself. Uh yeah. As I always am, because I have very little else to do and I really enjoy doing this. So I uh it doesn't matter, I was gonna have a co-caster today, but something came up, so I will be solo casting today, but that's okay. Hopefully I'll be able to guide you through the games. And we do have a good set of series coming up today for you, so it's all well and good. I am joined by the uh, sheep that Rapid and Cadenzi bought me, and my cat behind me as well. So, I'm not on my own, it's all good. Yeah, more people should turn up, I don't know what's been happening recently, but... It's a Friday evening, I should probably turn my light on soon. Because as you can see, it's quite dark already. Uh, but you know what, let's start off without the light on and let's go from there. But either way, a uh, couple of cool series coming up today. This is the first week of the Round 1 playoffs. So uh, that should be a lot of fun, Nil. Let's have a look at what teams are going to be playing. As there's a few good ones coming up here, as you'll soon see. So let's hop on over to the main overlay and let's have a look. Oh, that's the wrong one. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see, uh, semi-final A, which is going to be our first one, is going to be Netwars versus IRK, and then uh, rounding us off for this evening is going to be the second semi-final, semi-final B, between DM and White Clan. Now, in case you're unsure of how the format worked, uh, basically Team A1, so the winner of Group A, would be facing... Uh, the second place of Group B, so that was Net Wars and IRK, which is why they're the first semi-final. And DM did come second in Group B. White won the tiebreaker last week against IRK, so they led the group. Oh, they led Group B as well, so they're in the uh, top of semi-final B. So let's see how this is going to go. Of course, um, there's a lot of different things that could be happening. We could see a lot of interesting games. And I mean, to start us off, we've got a pretty good one here, so let's actually have a look at the matchup screen. And let's see exactly how this is going to go. And let's see who's going to be playing today on the maps as well. So, let's swap on over. Whoops. There we go. Okay. So if we have a look here, you can see we're going to be starting off with Grand Line SE. Moving on to Sin Chupung Leung, New Empire of the Sun, Pathfinder... And Gladiator to round us off, so that should be a lot of fun there. And let's actually have a look at our first matchup, so you may have seen that on the previous screen. It's going to be Netwars, who did a very, very good job in Group A. They did top Group A, they topped it with a 5-1 score. And all three of their races did very, very well, actually. Terran doing an amazing job, of course they do have Koga, and I think he did win quite a lot of games, which is uh, unsurprising. The Zergs did a good job as well, including Zero, players like that. And the Protoss rounded off with a good score as well. Now their opponents are going to be the... They were joint first in Group B. Uh, they also had a 5-1 score. Uh, but they don't have any Terran... Yeah, they don't actually have a single Terran player in Round 1. Uh, but they did lose the tiebreak to White, so that did push them in to second place for Group B, and that's why we see them here against Net Wars. Now their Zerg and Protoss have done an incredible job. Uh, they've gone through a lot more Ace matches than I think anyone else has. Now, there was a lot of people that were saying that Group uh, Group B was a lot harder than Group A, so that could be something to do with it, but I'm actually just going to quickly post on Twitter that this is live as well, but yeah, I mean, um, uh, it's been so long since I've solo casted that I've forgotten what to say. Uh, but what I was going to say is that, I mean, their Zerg and Protoss have done really well. Hopefully they'll add a Terran for round two, uh, because it is nice to see some diversity from the teams. But either way, it's going to be a fun matchup, and let's actually have a look. Um, let's have a look at who the players are going to be in this first semi-final. Okay, so as you can see, starting us off, we're going to have a ZVZ between Zero and Whistler. We're going to be moving on to a PBZ between Mazur and Norgrim. 
Yeti versus DeWalt is going to be our third match. That should be a good one. Yeti doing a really good job so far. DeWalt doing an incredible job even switching teams uh, due to the disqualification of SK Alpha. And finally, to round us off, if it doesn't go to an ace match, is going to be Koga versus Cubic. Uh, Cubic, one of the newest additions to IRK. I believe he's a Korean, a pretty good one. And Koga, of course, uh, is one of the... Uh, one of the best foreign Terran players at the moment, arguably the best, so that should be a very fun matchup as well on Pathfinder. Now let's actually quickly have a look at the stats of the players, and then we'll have a quick look at the map as well. Now Zero is 3 for 1 at the moment, so is Whistler. Uh, they both have one win against Zerg players, so that may actually be up a bit. I need to fix those, uh, those or that data even, that'll be done for round 2. But they're going to be moving on to Grand Line SE. Now, of course, this is the DVZ, so the map won't come into it too much. Although it does give you that ramp to defend against early Ling aggression. But let's see if that comes into it as we move on over to our first game. And uh, I forgot where all my buttons are. This is what happens when you take too much of a break. But yeah, let's move on over to the game. Okay, so starting us off in the top right-hand position, we do have the Teal Zerg fighting for IRK in this first semi-final. It's going to be Whistler. And his opponent down here in the 7 o'clock position, we do have the White Zerg fighting for Netwars. Lead, uh, organizer of the Bombastic Starling Caster as well. It's going to be the Polish Zerg, Zero. Now, uh, I'm not really sure exactly how this game is going to go. But, um, it should be a lot of fun. Now, I see that people are chatting about this in Discord, so I guess there are some people watching. Uh, hopefully more and more people are filter in, but this is one of the problems. Like, I was... Streaming SCPL three nights a week, my view account was going up and up and up every single time because there was consistency. Then the playoffs kind of knock that a bit. I think for round two, what I'll do is I'll try and organize something in the sort of off weeks as such because A, I was getting bored of not casting, and B, uh, I think a lot of people kind of forgot the S2PL existed, so it's going to be my job to sort of improve that in round two. I'm going to clarify a lot of the rules a lot better. I'm going to write them out in Korean as well if I can, just to make things a little bit easier for the Korean players in the league. Uh, we do actually have a 12 ball coming up for Whistler, or for Zero even, and for Whistler. So mirror builds so far, both of them have sent their first Overlord in the wrong direction, so... Uh, they're both going to be a little bit... Oh, well, they're going to lack information for quite a while, so they both have to play quite conservative here. Uh, they can't really afford to go for a 12 patch. This is the first game of a best of five, of course. So if they lose, it's not the biggest deal. Uh, but of course, you do have that psychological effect of moving into a series with an advantage. And that's what both of them will be looking to do here, as they do want to get their place in the playoff finals for round one. Now, just in case you don't know how the playoffs are going to work, so there's four rounds in the STPL. We're in the first round of group stages, and this is the first set of playoffs. And the idea is that each playoff uh, team gets some league points. Now, I believe I've settled this now, so I think the winner of the playoffs are going to get five points. Second place will get three. Third place will get two, and fourth place will get one. Now those league points all add up, and then at the end of the four round play, or at the end of the fourth round playoff, the four teams I might make it eight, depending on how many teams actually get points. will move on to the grand final playoff bracket, which will be the end of the first season of STPL, and that is going to decide who gets the money at the end. A prize pool currently sits around $1,000, so that's pretty amazing. 
Uh, thank you, huge thank you to all the donators and everything that have made that possible. I'm hoping once I've got through the next couple of months as well, I'll be able to put some money into that myself because I realise that uh, it's a bit cheap me running the tournament and uh, not giving anything to the prize pool, but I'm just a poor boy from a poor family. Spare me my life from this monstrosity. But yeah, that was a Queen reference. Either way, uh, it doesn't matter. Let's actually just check them on D&D because I don't think I am. I definitely am now. Uh, so that's the main thing, I don't want to get spammed by chat. We do have some links out on the way for Whistler now. He's going to look to put on some pressure, uh, but Zero in a defensive position already. Now Whistler has shown a very good couple of ZVZ so far. I know he's definitely beaten more than one Zerg, so he does have the skill. But does he have the skill to beat Zero, who is arguably doing really well right now? He streams a hell of a lot. Uh, so if you do ever want to check out his stream, do do so. You can find him on twitch.tv forward slash 0pl, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure if Whistler streams, but one other thing I want to do for round two is I want to make sure we get a lot more interviews with the players and um, get everything going. But it looks like Age is tuned in. Now, Age is the uh, clan leader of IRK, so he's going to be rooting for his team here. I'm not sure how this went. Uh, one thing I did, one of the big organizational flubs I made this week, was I did not want to find out who won the playoffs. So, I basically had to try and organize teams as if I don't know who's playing who in the final. And they've got their games coming up Sunday. So, I'll admit I made a little bit of a flub there, but I'm glad I did not spoil myself because I do not know the results here. So, it makes it a little bit more exciting for me. I can... Um, sort of talk to you guys as if I don't know anything because that's actually true so it's all well and good but here we go we've got a couple of extra drones here for zero so zero is going to be heading in with a little bit more of an economic advantage let's just check the main he has nine drones here three in gas uh whistler has nine drones, three in gas, and two in the natural. So, Zero is going to have a slight Ling advantage here, but of course, uh, sorry, Whistler is going to have a slight Ling advantage here, but Zero is going to have the positioning to try and hold on to this. But how well is Whistler going to be able to actually attack into this? There's no sunken colony being made, which is actually a little bit greedy. But here we go, we have a nice concave coming in from Whistler. Can he break through Zero at this point? There's a lot of Ling still left alive for Whistler, and not many for. Zero, he's gonna lose those two extra drones and he could even lose his main. And here we go, the first Mulas are out. They're gonna take a long time to kill all of these Mulas. The drones are being microed away. They need to try and do what they can, try and get as much damage as possible. But there are so many drones going down for Zero right now. And Whistler is going to be feeling incredibly good about this. But here is the moment of truth. Has Whistler made way too many links here? He's adding on Mulas, but they're gonna be later. Now, if, uh, if Zero does choose to strike, if he chooses to go right now, he's going to have the air advantage. But he is going to try and take down that Overlord. But Whistler, or oh, Zero even, has an extra couple of Overlords here. So he's not going to be supply blocked, whereas Whistler is. And this could be the deciding moment in the game if Zero decides to strike at this very, very moment. Let's have a look at what's going to happen. It looks like Zero doesn't really know what's going on. He doesn't want to lose in a stupid way, so he's being very conservative. He's adding on more drones back at home. He's trying to stay defensive with his mutas, but I don't think he realizes just how far ahead economically he is. Uh, he's, of course, had to add it on... Oh, he's had... He's had to add on more drones to make up for the ones he's lost, but the fact he supply-blocked Whistler meant that he could sneak those in without falling behind in the air count. And in ZVZ in the mid game, that is 100% the biggest deal. We do have seven mutelists here for Whistler, whereas... Oh, we have seven for both of them. But of course, Zero, with the additional build time from not being supply blocked, does have some Scourge, does have those extra drones. And although we do have the three drones on the gas at the natural, we don't see an extra drone of minerals for Whistler, so... Whistle is not in the best of position. Of course, he's not in the worst either. Uh, he did only really trade links for links, but he did also get a few extra drones. So that's going to be a little bit of a benefit for him. And it looks like both players playing very, very defensively here, not really wanting to risk anything. As I said, this is a very, very important game for both players. This could set the tone of the entire series, the entire semi-final of round one. 
and both teams have fought incredibly hard to get here, especially these two players. These two players have made good showings for their team the whole way through the tournament so far, and seeing them uh, fight off against each other here is very, very exciting for me because if you don't already know, basically Group A and Group B in the SCPL so far have never interacted. This is the first time IRK will be facing against Netwars, of course. Age and Koga as the clan leaders have chance to watch the games of the other teams, so I know, I think Age has been uh, doing that a lot, so he's probably prepared players and builds to try and snipe these players uh, from Netwars, but both are very strong teams. Here we go. How is the Mulis micro going to be? It looks like the Scourge have actually been a little bit idle, but a lot of Scourge connecting for both sides. This is such a confusing battle, but I think Whistler may have enough. I can't even tell. Oh, but here we go, reinforcing Scourge from Whistler. No, it looks like Zero has the advantage now. Whistler's Mulis dying incredibly quickly. No plus one carapace for either team, but this extra Scourge damage is not going to be enough. It looks like Zero just has too many Mulis. The Scourge micro, not perfect. The anti-Scourge micro, great though, but here we go. Another one does go down. It's only five Mulis, but he's getting more and more drones here. The gas mining has been stopped at the natural. And that is going to be GG as Zero takes out Whistler in this first game. Yeah, let's actually just move on back over to the camera. Okay, wow, okay, I really do need to turn the light on. I'm going to do that when I load up the next replay. It's so dark in here right now, what the hell? But yeah, you know what? Zero took out Whistler there. That was a very impressive game by him. I'm going to throw up the intro so I can load up the next replay, turn my light on, because this is just ridiculous. My room looks darker than the background. How is that even possible? Uh, you know what? It's getting near, near dark. Well, it's getting near dark time. Okay. Kix has spoken too much today at work. He doesn't know words now. But you know what? I will see you guys in just a minute. And we'll be back soon with more STPL action. Don't go anywhere. And, uh, buttons. There we go. And just like that, whoa, this is not the right screen. Let's go back. No, oh, that's also the wrong screen. Here we go, I am back. I have the light on now so you can see my room. Not that it's that great, but someone said I make it look like a studio, which is kind of cool. I've even got the weird studio door prop that you all think is my front door, but this is just all to play off the jail meme. I mean, you know what? We're going to head into the next game. You just saw if you were... Uh, eagle-eyed there, who the players are going to be, but I'm still going to go through the spiel I normally do, just because that's part of the show, and it's part of the thing I've always done, and I always plan to, so if you don't like it, hopefully you'll come around to it, and hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of the SCPL as much as I am going to, but here we go, let's, the overlay is all set up, let's actually introduce who the players are going to be for this next, next game, and let's see what the matchup's going to be and what map they're going to be on as well. So let's head on over to the main overlay and let's get started with the next game. <laughs> 